keep asking tomorrow my... believe it or not jerry lewis will turn 69. for some that's time to step aside but for lewis it's time to step back into the spotlight he's tonight's bob costas interview Last I'm driven by the excitement of this. Those were the good old days. I'm driven by the joy of what I feel in that audience. It's as though all of New York got together prior to my arriving and said, let's give this guy one nice part. Oh, yeah. Jerry Lewis is doing Broadway for the first time in a six-decade career in show business. It's, it's incredible. It's incre what would you think? Think about it. Times Square, wonderland of life. It's a familiar neighborhood to Lewis. He and Dean Martin did their act around here almost 50 years ago. Paramount was about three blocks from here. The Capitol was up that way. The Roxy was up that way. We played it all, but they were movie houses. Mm -hmm. This theater is on Broadway on broadway and it's a legitimate theater see the people that walk down the streets playing in cats and let's miss or apple these they go down to side streets sunset boulevard people go down to side streets this is broadway you might be right now the happiest man in this whole city how about the country and we might include new zealand <laughs> come on let's go to my place God, I'd sell my soul for one long ball hitter. Now there's an arresting idea. Damn Yankees is a revival of a 1950s musical about a man who makes a bargain with the devil to be young again. Do you mind? And become the best baseball player alive. <laughs> Mr. Applegate, how can I ever thank you? Oh, we'll find some way. <laughs> Lewis plays the devil. There's an awful lot of people that grew up with me. And what they're saying is, thanks for the fun, and more important than anything else, thanks for still doing it. Is this something you needed, or is it something that's just a pleasant icing on no, the cake? No, I needed it. Why? I don't think I knew I needed it, but I needed it. Why? I think because I ran the gamut of all of the attitudes that come with celebrity getting bashed, shot down, attacked, maligned. And I needed to do something that would be devoid of all of that, if it was right. You need talent, you need timing, and of course it helps if you work like the devil. Every night now, the people in this audience are telling Jerry Lewis it is right. He'll be 69 tomorrow. He spent virtually his entire life in front of audiences. Lewis's father, a performer himself and a man Jerry revered, put him on stage when he was just five years old. Ever since, it's been a turbulent life and career. But Lewis seems to have put many of the old conflicts to rest. And now, with each performance of Damn Yankees, he's on the receiving end of lots of warmth and appreciation. But to hear him tell it, the person who'd be most pleased by all this isn't in attendance. What do you suspect your father would say? The guy who said, you know, unless you played Broadway, you really haven't done it. Now you got it. If he said anything, he'd say, it. now you got it. <laughs> Jerry Lewis was born Joseph Levitch in Newark, New Jersey. His parents were vaudeville performers, and Lewis says his father taught him everything he knows. When he was just 18, Jerry Lewis hit it big by teaming up with this man. Dean Martin. I thought, my God, there hasn't been a comedy team where one is a handsome man and the other a monkey. And we'll be out on tour again. In nightclubs and theaters, too. I'm For 10 years, from 1946 to 56, they were one of the biggest acts in show business, pulling down over $10 million a year. And this was the 50s, remember. Theaters, nightclubs, motion pictures, television. Oh, boy, will we make money. Not everything Jerry Lewis has done in his long career belongs in the time capsule, but looking at the old kinescopes, the best of Martin and Lewis was inspired. Hey, you! 
You ever packed a G on your hip when you copped a heist? Did I? Wow. <laughs> Did you ever take it on the lamb and a shamus who had the croaker beside the crease? <laughs> we didn't know what we had. We later learned we had lightning in a bottle. He has lived. I don't know where I am now. I'll be, I'll be now. I'll be now. There was something dangerous about it, not just spontaneous, but considering where comedy was, and television in its infancy, there was almost a feeling of insurrection about it. Well, it was a risk. You're dealing with, we were de dealing with live at all times. There was nothing pre-recorded. We were doing it, you were seeing it. Moon hits you, I like the big Lewis says Martin was the key to the success of the team. The world seems to shine like you've had too much wine. But somehow, the monkey, not the leading man, got all the attention. Jerry this, Jerry that. Jerry wrote it. Jerry's the businessman. And then on stage, that crazy Jerry had the audience and so on. Of course, Dean sang a song or two, during, and that was all he got. I don't know that I could have taken 10 years of that. Here. That's from Mrs. Muldoon, and that's from me. Thanks. You've often cited the love that people could see in the act. Yes. And the love that you felt for Dean. And you weren't bashful about expressing it to him. And yet you wrote in your own book that Dean looked at you at one point in the 50s, just before the breakup, he says, you can talk all you want about love, Pally. I look at you and I see a freaking dollar sign. Right. It's He's, pretty cold. He said that. He said that, but he didn't mean that. How do you know he didn't mean it? Because he loved me. He needed to fire back at what it was that created some of his pain. After the split, Lewis went solo. He starred in over 30 films, often writing, producing, and directing them. While film giants like Woody Allen and Martin Scorsese have high praise for Lewis's work, Lewis was not a favorite of the critics. Not in this country, anyway. Ah, but in France, bastion of culture, his comedy is seen as genius. There, he's been named best foreign director eight times and awarded the Legion of Honor, France's highest civilian award. Pierre Attax is a famous French clown, an admirer of Jerry Lewis. Il n'y a pas d'équivalence en France où il joue le rôle de sa propre mère qui pleure, etc. C'est une certaine image de de, de l'Amérique, effectivement. Euh... Paris is fan club of Jerry Lewis. <laughs> of course, not all the French are so highbrow. Uh, aux fans de Jerry Lewis. Patrick Levy is no professor, but he's nutty about Lewis. Oh, yeah. I like Jerry Lewis. I'm not Jerry Lewis. <laughs> well, genius or not, one thing you'd think everyone would admire about Jerry Lewis... Starring Jerry Lewis. ...is his work with the muscular dystrophy telethon. It may be schmaltzy and vagacy, but here's what counts. He's raised more than a billion dollars for research. But true to the pattern of his life, even here, he can't escape some broadsides. A group which includes a few former MDA poster children has protested what they call pity mongering. How hurt were you by this, and how much did you take their criticism to heart? I can't be bothered with that, Bob. We're, we're dealing in life and death for a lot of children in this country. My focus is the children that are being helped. My focus is the association that does magnificent work. And my focus is the research that I see making inroads. I cannot be deterred. Nobody's going to stop me. I can't be concerned with a splinter group of people. Would you send my friend out, please? The telethon has had its share of memorable moments, including the day in 1976 when Frank Sinatra brought out a surprise guest. Martin and Lewis hadn't spoken since the breakup, not so much as a phone call in 20 years. It was a very courageous thing for him to do. And I loved that I saw him for the first time in 20 years. Uh, so you working? How much contact do the two of you have now? We've been talking the last few weeks and a few weeks before that. I'm just checking on his 
well-being. He's a stubborn Italian schmuck sometimes. He doesn't take care of himself, and I get on his case. And when I get on his case, he says, I, I hope the next call's four weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good for you. <laughs> Except for the telethon, Lewis wasn't seen very much in the 70s and early 80s. He struggled with an addiction to painkillers, went through a divorce, and in 1983, underwent emergency heart surgery. He came out of it, he says, a changed man, and he now appears remarkably fit, his outlook brightened by the affections of his wife and adopted daughter. But it's not just his personal life that's changed for the better. A generation of comics who grew up laughing at Lewis now pay tribute to him. A few examples. Please welcome Jerry Lewis. The standing ovation at Comic Relief. Paul Reiser's mad pretty. about you. Lady! <laughs> and just look at Jim Carrey, who's quick to acknowledge Lewis's influence. Do you have a feeling now that in some sense you're hip again? You know, <laughs> Letterman does Jerry Lewis's voice yes. in some way almost every night. Maybe this is an answer. That night of comic relief, I had never met Robin Williams before. And he gave me a marvelous gift. He walked over, and I was talking to someone, and he tapped me on the shoulder and said, excuse me, and I turned, and I saw it was Robin, and he extended his hand, and he said, maestro. So for Lewis, it seems to have come full circle. The old conflicts have either been resolved, or he's at least made his peace with them. But he still had that one thing to do play Broadway, like his father urged him to. When I come up on that elevator, he's riding up there with me. And I can choke it down just a little bit to turn and acknowledge that standing ovation. I'm hoping that by show 67, he ain't going to be riding up in the elevator with me and choking me. <laughs> Just this Sunday, Lewis had his opening in Damn Yankees. Jerry Lewis is legitimate at last. <laughs> and the New York Times Review, which can make or break a show, was a good one. Mr. Lewis is safe at home. Looking back, what do you regret now? And are any of the slams that you took legitimate? The man that does nothing makes no mistakes. I did a lot of things. I did not do them all good. And I'm ready to take that hit. My battle with the press is over. I have succumbed because I think it's the best thing to do. If you were invisible like the devil and stood outside the Marquee Theater and everybody walked out and you heard 99 people say, man, oh man, am I glad I came and wasn't he great as Applegate? And one son of a gun said, stunk, wasn't as good as the other guy, stunk. Would that stick with you? Sure, it bothers you. Why couldn't I get them all? Well, when you get older and you get into that, that phase of wisdom, you learn that if you are indeed wise, you'll recognize you will never, but I mean never, please everybody. Jerry Lewis will continue in Damn Yankees on Broadway for six months. Then he'll take it on a national tour for a year. There's even talk of remaking the film. Coming up. 389. Thank you for shopping at Grand Union. Yes, there's a faith in damn Yankees, and he is now the toast of Broadway. And Jerry joins us from the CS.